Hey everyone, it's Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA. Today we are going to jump into some custom calendars. So I, I have actually had a few requests um, from people uh, over the last couple of months around uh, calculating similar things that you would get from time intelligence calcs, but actually doing them over custom calendars. Now, commonly it seems, and, and something that I, I wasn't um, really really aware of until um until i had many many requests about this is that a lot of a lot of organizations actually just don't work by the calendar date they might actually work by like say a financial week uh number or they might actually work by a, a custom week number or an, um, an iso week number and so the time intelligence calculations unfortunately in power bi just do not work when you're working with these custom calendars so i just want to show you what i mean by that so if we look at uh, this table here, I'll just sort it correctly. And so we've got some information from it's uh, from 2013. Um, and you'll see here that we've got every single date, which is fine. Um, but if we actually look along this uh, this table, you'll see here we've got fi financial month number, financial week number, uh, week and quarter, calendar week number. So obviously the calendar week number is going to be different to the financial week number but where the real difference is is if we come to the end of the year i just want to show show you this is i'll just jump to the end of uh, this year and you'll see here that this calendar week number actually goes over the end of the year so we have two days inside of 2013 which is in week one and then we have the rest which is in 2014 and so this is where you can actually run into a, a bit of trouble because the time intelligence calcs work directly over a calendar date that's it so you can't utilize any of the good ones like um uh, year-to-date calcs or date add or same period last year none of those will actually work and so you've got to work out custom logic usually by using the filter function to actually work out these numbers and so today what i want to show you is how you can work out a year to date number based on the week so how you can calculate a, a, like a cumulative total based on a week versus an actual date and to highlight it i'm actually going to compare it to actually running it via a date using the simple time intelligence calcs and then i'm going to show you how you can write the formula uh, using filter and a, few, and a few other functions um, to work it out based on the week number so um and, and look it just takes a little bit of understanding filter and how to util utilize that inside of calculate and i'm going to also show you how you can use variables to really simply lay these out um, and as we do more of those more of these types of calcs um, on custom calendars through time um, it will make it, it will make us make it easy for us to um, to leverage into the next thing okay so total sales year today so say we wanted to run a um, say our financial year started in may uh, and we wanted to run a cumulative total for that financial year. Now, how do we do that? Well, this is the, the on the standard date calendar, this is how you'd do it. So it's, I mean, it's relatively straightforward um, to actually apply. All, all we have to do is go calendar, uh, to put in the date column. So this is the, the, the actual date column. And then we, we type in 30th of the 4th, which, which signifies that that's the last day in the financial year. And then once we apply that to... Um, to the date context we get we get the correct result so you see here that it just accumulates through time and then I go all the way down to the end of April 2014 so I'll just get to that number and you'll see here that it, it rounds off so 19 million uh, is the is the is the in total for that financial year and then we start again 55,000 okay so now um, so this is where the trick is now I can actually bring this in to this table here which only has the financial year and the financial week number and you'll see that it it's um, it does it does calculate correctly but 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 we do run into an issue here because it's now doesn't uh, the the date column does not overlay correct um, uh, perfectly over the financial week number there's some overlap between the financial um, but 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 from the end of the year or end of financial year to the next financial year and that's where things just start going a bit haywire and so anything in 2015 would be wrong and so we so we can't use it we can't use it essentially we've got to create our own formula so that's what we're going to do so let's let's run through i'm going to show you how you can how you can write a formula that actually solves this so let's create a new measure and i'm going to call this total sales uh, ytd and i'm going to call this custom 
and I'm going to use variables. So I'm a, I'm, well, I use variables wherever I can, basically. Um, and I highly recommend you do the same. Uh, it just makes things, set this, you can just set things out in a far more intuitive way. And so I'm just going to go var, and I'm going to call this current uh, fin week. And then I'm just going to go selected value. Selected value is the perfect way. Um, historically, you might have used values. And sometimes in that case, you would have had to use um, if uh, this logic that goes if has one value. But selected value just solves all of that. Um, it's, a, it's a relatively new um, function inside of DAX. Um, so it's perfect for this type of stuff. And then I can go week. Um, so what, I, what do I want to find? I want to find financial week number. And then I'm going to create another variable. And I'm going to go current uh, fin year. And I'm going to do exactly the same type of logic. I'm going to go selected value. And then I'm just going to put in here fin financial year. So that's going to align those two financial year and weeks for us, which is good. And then this is where I'm going to write, I'm actually going to write the logic. So this is how it's actually going to go solve it inside um, the calculation engine. So I'm going to go calculate. We're still calculating up total sales. Nothing is changing there. It's just we're going to calculate it in a different context to what the normal time intelligence calcs do. So to do that, we need to use filter. And this is how you're going to solve most of these with custom calendars. And then I'm going to go all calendar daily. So that releases any context on the calendar. And then we're going to reapply the context based on our logic here. And so then I'm going to go fin year. So I'm going to go if fin year is equal to the current fin year. And so this is where the variables um, being outside of uh, the filter, uh, the row context and filter um, is a positive thing. Because what it's going to do, it's going to actually return the, the year um, for whatever context it's in. So in this case, it's going to, uh, so, so for instance, this result is going to always, always apply 2014, which is good. And then I'm going to go and, and then I'm going to go fin week number equals to the current fin week. Actually, no, so it needs to be less than equal to. So that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to get the uh, cumulative total. And then I'm just going to round that off because this is all we actually have to do. Uh, and let's have a look. Oh, I just put that in the wrong table. So I'm just going to move that. Move that to my key measures. And now let's check out. So let's just review. So actually, let's just review. So we've got uh, two current fin week and current fin year. And so whilst this one, and wh why we do this, this one is going to iterate. This one is going to iterate through every single financial week number. So, But we want to um, always have, say, 52. We all... all not 52, sorry, we always want to have, okay, well, what is the current uh, financial week number in a particular row that that evaluation is happening? So there's a little bit um, to understand there in terms of row and filter context, but um, but certain, certainly as you go through one of these examples, it's, it, it will make a lot more sense. Okay, so that is now iterating through that logic. Now, if I drag this in, we'll see that this actually calculates the correct result for us based on our custom calendar. So I'll just change the format of that. Okay, so now, the, the the real litmus test is is it calculating the correct amount uh, at the first week, right? And so let's look down this number, and if we get to week 52, okay, so it's calculating that correctly. But then when we jump to the first week here, check this out. It brings us 359780, and that is correct because that is what, say, our total sales is actually bringing us on that first week. And then so these two added together, uh, there's 735 and so on and so forth. So now that actually calculates correctly. Okay, so I'm going to round that off. Hopefully you found, um, found that insightful and useful and, and those dealing with custom calendars, this is just the beginning of um, you know, how you would work out a, a, a calc like this. Um, now, your filter is always going to be in there somewhere and then it's just the logic which you place inside a filter which is going to solve these for you. Um, look forward to the next video. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, Check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.